Hey everybody, I'm Hamza Kramza and today we'll be doing one of the more requested videos of the channel, the Pre-Mill Drush. This build has been getting a lot of popularity among high level players for its ability to stop early walls and potential to kill unloomed villagers. We'll run through the build step by step and hopefully show you how to do it yourself. Hope you enjoy! The pre-mail trash is nothing new, as players like Huang, Slam, and others at the top have been doing it for quite some time, but this build is surging back in popularity as players try to stop those slimy early wallers. That being said, pre-mill drushing is definitely one of the more difficult Dark Age builds to pull off effectively, and even pros can struggle with the build. <gasps> Wait, did I even go for berries? I didn't even go for berries. Oh, disaster. The Prush is extremely tight if you're not pushing any deer or have any extra food on the map. The difficulty mostly comes from the food shortages after Ville 14, eco balancing and simultaneously having to micro a fragile army at the front from very early on. However, if you're up to the challenge, you'll have a very strong build order under your belt. Just as a quick note before we start, this build more than any other build that I've made a video on so far requires you to read the game as you go. So if you need another villager in Dark Age, just build it. If you need to quickly wall with four villagers to keep the scouts or the man at arms or whatever incoming enemy attack is coming, don't hesitate and learn to adapt. Without any small adjustments, you're going to struggle to successfully pull this build off consistently. That being said, the only thing left to do is to show you how. Let's go get it. All right, and we're off. So we're gonna build our first two houses with our starting villagers. We're gonna go gather our starting sheep and queue up as many villagers as possible inside of our town center. The first six villagers, of course, going over to the sheep to gather food so we can sustain our villager production. Now. I'm going to be following a trend that I have been doing in my recent videos, which is I'm going to be listing the villager count rather than the total population. And this is mostly because we're going to be building militia later on in this build. And let's say, you know, you're going forward with your militia and you lose to, to you know, I don't know, battling, you know, battling villagers or something like that. Or, you know, if they go into scouts and they clean your drush up, um, it's a little bit awkward to kind of track with total population. So. Uh, just keep that in mind uh, when, when you are looking at the counts uh, up the top of the screen as they appear. Um, those are mostly for the just the villagers and the text that you should get, um, not the total population. So the next thing that we're going to be doing here is sending our four or next four villagers over to the wood line. And it's really, really important here that you make sure that your wood line is set up, up as efficiently as possible. And mostly what that means is that all four of your villagers are kind of on separate trees. Or, or on like a pretty efficient setup. So just any any setup on the wood line that would you know minimize the bumping that kind of happens with you know uh, the villager pathing in uh, definitive edition here. So uh, we're sending our four villagers over to wood there. And what we are doing here with our scout is actually really important. And you know we are of course just scouting as normal, trying to find our resources. But we are also scouting the major wood lines and the areas that we can use to wall off our base. And this is something that normally, if you're going to do a normal drush, you kind of have the luxury of exploring your own base for like, I don't know, you know, another uh, minute or two minutes in game time before you actually have to look for your opponent and send out your drush. So if you can explore your map uh, pretty well and see if your map is wallable, um, that's usually a good start to see if you actually want to carry out this rush, or maybe even go into like you know something different, like you know man at arms into archers or something like that. Because um, if your map is particularly open, it's probably not a good idea. So what we did there is we sent a villager from our sheep to go and lure the boar, and we sent our twelfth villager over to go and build a house. And that villager that's building the house is eventually going to build the barracks, and that will have our three militia producing there. So ideally here, what we're aiming for is we're gonna have 10 on four uh, with our, you know, underneath the town center. And we want 10 villagers to kind of be gathering as long as possible there. Uh, I know I've actually asked on previous videos, uh, how could I kind of address this wood shortage that we're seeing now for the initial barracks. And a lot of the solutions that I've actually tried, so, you know, sending a villager a little bit earlier to go and, you know, potentially gather 10 wood and then go over to you know, whatever resource that they're needed on, food or what have you. 
actually just leads to kind of like a food shortage. And, you know, having that 20 food or, you know, 15 food or whatever you could have gathered during the time you gathered 10 wood is really, really a, a big difference maker there. So um, I'm actually a fan of just, you know, eating the time shortage that the wood causes and, you know, just dealing with it. So we're, we're gathering our 10 gold from the uh, main uh, gold pile there, and we're going to send that gold villager to go and wall. And this is really important because if you're just, you know, you can essentially do a 28 population drush without, you know, walling or anything like that, but I just don't know how realistic that really is. So I'm going to try to include the walling villagers as part of the build here, and hopefully that makes a little bit more sense than... You know, some of the stuff that I've been seeing on, you know, drushes and that type of thing. Um, what we're doing here as well is now that we have our 10 villagers on the food and the boar, uh, we are actually going to send some of our villagers up to six, actually, on to berries. So that way we can gather our, uh, you know, berries from another in uh, food income. Um, what we're also doing here is sending four over to the wood line so that we have eight on wood. And that should sustain you know, pretty much everything we need as far as our walling needs and everything else in the Dark Age and give us a nice little buffer for some of the farms that we're building. Now, I accidentally am going to be housing myself here, so I'm researching Loom at this point in the game. And also, I accidentally sent a villager over to Wood. Um, you really want that villager over to Berries, honestly, instead of Nine on Wood. But in this case, or in this build, it works out. So uh, I decided to actually use this footage instead of uh, something that's a little bit more solid because, you know, it kind of highlights that you can make a small mistake here. So uh, at this point, you know, researching Loom at any point that it makes sense is actually fine because, you know, there's a very real possibility that your opponent is reaching, you know, feudal age pretty soon and it's going to be harassing your walling bills. So you really just want to be safe there and, you know, make sure he can't do much. So we're gathering our food and we are using about six or seven to gather from our sheep. And... Then we are getting loom, or sorry, you know, uh, six or seven on sheep, and we have our six villagers on berries. And then we're also going to build farms every 60 wood that we have now, up to about eight farms. And I found that eight farms actually works best here. You can do, you know, seven farms or whatever, but um, usually seven farms is only possible when there's some type of, like, you know, strange, uh, you know, hitch in the build where, you, you know, you're... Uh, you know, accidentally misallocated some extra villagers on food or something like that. And uh, you just have some extra food lying around. And then you'll probably be short on wood at some point else in the build or, you know, some point uh, in time later. So, um, you know, I think I think that eight is probably the, the magic number here. Um, you can also, you know, do, uh, you know, nine on wood if you're going to go 29 villagers. But here I'm doing 28 villagers. So I actually pulled the ninth villager that I accidentally sent uh, on the wood line and pull them back over to the uh, farm here. So we're going to be reaching the 28 villager point here very quickly, or very soon rather. And once we hit that uh, 28 villager point, we are going to want to click up to feudal and then send four of the villagers that were gathering sheep all the way over to a gold mine. So now, uh, just reading the map here, and this is kind of the point that I was, you know, kind of saying that you need to be able to kind of read your situation as you, uh, as your map, you know, allows this drush or, you know, whatever. And um, in this case, I see that my, my main gold is forward. So there's no reason for me to put my main gold forward. So, or, you know, go mine the main gold forward when I have a, a back gold in, you know, obviously in the back. And like, let's, let's say my opponent had gone archers or had gone some type of, you know, tower aggression to keep me off my main gold. They could very easily do that. And I'd be forced to do something like, you know, stupid, like build a market and then sell, you know, stone or sell wood or just really throw off the eco situation and they'll find a way to get back in the game and get the advantage back on you. So, you know, this build should inherently give you some type of advantage. Uh, especially if you can kill in like an unloomed villager early or something like that. So just keep an eye out for that and, um, you know, adapt as adapt as you need to. I've actually even seen, you know, certain occasions where, uh, you know, a pro will go for the stone and then just sell the stone. Um, but you generally don't want to do that. So um, that being said, we're going to move on to the next step here, which is we've reached the feudal age. We want to build a blacksmith in an archery range and send two from our TC that we're building onto either wood or gold. Now, 
the villager allocation here is a little bit, you know, you can kind of do kind of whatever you want here, depending on how you want to play the rest of the game. So like, for instance, let's say that I was Franks and I was doing the same build. I would probably want to go some type of, you know, stable push. So instead of sending, you know, uh, some over to, you know, wood or what, what have you, I might send, you know, the extras over to gold and work from there. And I might put, you know, a few more on farms so that I have enough uh, wood for, or sorry, food for night production. But this is kind of depends how you want to play it. Um, at this point, you know, you can kind of, your eco is set up for archers, so it makes the most sense to do that, but, you know, do whatever you want to. Um, another thing that a lot of builds will kind of ignore is the fact that, you know, we've spent a lot of time with two of our villagers to go and do a lot of walling. Um, we've invested like, you know, something like 150 wood into those walls, as well as the fact that, you know, our uh, two villagers that were building the whole time were essentially idle from our economy. Um, they weren't doing anything productive and building walls isn't the best use of their time. So, um, yeah, this is something that, you know, you should keep in mind. Like if you have a massive map, then you're going to have a massive amount of food or sorry, of wood, uh, being sucked into your, uh, build. And you should probably go up at like 29 villagers, maybe even 30 if you really want to be greedy. Um, but 29 sounds good. So the on-screen instructions there said to kind of go for archers and, you know, get our fletching as well as our eco upgrades. And you kind of just want to do that as soon as you have the resource to actually, you know, uh, pull all of that together. So we, you know, get our horse collar, we get double bit axe. Uh, we do have our fletching and we're starting to produce archers. Now I am producing archers just slightly late here. And again, if your, you know, civilization has some type of eco bonus, um, you can probably get away with a much smoother 28 population uh, drush or, you know, pre-mill drush. But, you know, in this case, we're using Saracens, which inherently doesn't have too much too much going for them in this build. So uh, normally I would do 29 population, but we're doing 28 just to kind of highlight that you can. So we're building a second range there. We're upgrading the crossbow and we are going to want to start moving out towards our opponent and, you know, exhibit some mass or some uh, map pressure on them and take control. Now, if your opponent had gone into something like, you know, Skirmisher Archer in Feudal, they're probably either, you know, they've either broken your, you know, your Palisades and are, you know, marching around, or more likely at this point, if they see that you have your ranges up, they're probably retreating back to their base, which is perfectly fine. Um, once you have your crossbow numbers, you can start moving out and make some moves up against your opponent. So we start matching, we start massing our archers. We really want to start building our economy. Um, you know, this is, like I said, this is a little bit flexible. So we're doing Drush, uh, Fast Castle into archers. Um, you could change this into a Fast Castle Boom or a Fast Castle Knight. Just, um, you would kind of have to read the situation of how you want to set up your economy and you'll probably be good from there. Um, in most games also, we have our militia alive here. Probably not going to be the case, but if you do, there's always the option of upgrading them to men at arms once you reach the feudal age, um, especially if your opponent is just trying to ignore them and just quick wall them out. Uh, upgrading to man at arms is something that can be a super, super annoying addition for them and force a lot of repairs, a lot of wood, and just be overall awful. And that's all for this video. I really hope you all enjoyed the build. Huge shout out to Julian Rossler and everyone else who has supported the channel thus far. Just as a last thing, because I roasted Slam a bit in the intro, it's only fair to promote him a bit, so check out his stream on Twitch. That being said, also check out the Discord in the description, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.